everybody. There are now many questions arising in the world of education concerning the ideology of gender which underlies transgenderism. I am not thinking of individuals who for a variety of complex reasons experience difficulty identifying with their biological sex, be that of male or female. Our Christian approach to persons in any kind of confusion and suffering must al always be one of respect, compassion and understanding, together with a commitment to seeking appropriate help. However, today we are being encouraged, sometimes forcefully, not only to accept but to embrace an ideology of gender which is beginning to permeate social consciousness with far-reaching consequences. I have often warned that in that vacuum left by the loss of Christian faith within contemporary society, new ideologies would emerge. For decades, the popes, from St. John Paul II to Pope Francis, have warned that the radical ideology of gender would challenge the truth about the human person. When Pope Francis spoke to bishops at World Youth Day in 2016, his comments gained widespread attention in the secular media. He said, We are living a moment... We are living at a moment of the annihilation of man as image of God, the Holy Father observed. Today, children are being taught in school that one can choose one's sex. Echoing Pope Benedict's words, Pope Francis went on to urge us to reflect that we are living in the time of sin against God the Creator. And at Christmas 2012, Pope Benedict wrote, According to this philosophy, sex is no longer a given element of nature, it is a social role that we choose for ourselves. The profound falsehood of this theory is obvious. People dispute that they have a nature given by their bodily identity that serves as a defining element of who they are. We are thus faced with claims that our physical characteristics do not determine who we are as a man or as a woman, and that gender, gender is no more than a social construct. And yet we know that sex is determined by physical characteristics which start to develop from conception. The scriptures speak of these sexual differences being willed by God from the beginning. They come into existence when we are conceived, as science universally affirms. And this complementarity of man and woman is ordered to the procreation of children in which father and mother collaborate with God in the coming to be of a new person. St. John Paul II's theology of the body speaks powerfully of this unity between the self and the body, writing as follows. The body reveals the person. Science can examine our flesh in minute detail down to the cells and even the DNA. But no amount of scientific exploration can replace the truth that our bodies reveal us, giving form to our innermost being and unique personality. Our bodies are sacramental. They make the invisible visible. In his letter to the church, the joy of love, Pope Francis speaks again of how the ideology of gender has profound social implications. This is because it denies the difference and reciprocity in nature of man and woman and envisages a society without sexual differences, thereby eliminating the true basis of the family. This ideology leads to educational programs that, that promote a personal identity radically separated from the biological difference between male and female. Consequently, sexual identity becomes the choice of the individual, one which the person can also change over time. Already in 1994, in his letter to families, St. John Paul II observed, Modern rationalism does not tolerate mystery. It does not accept the mystery of man as male and female, 
nor is it willing to admit that the full truth about man has been revealed in Jesus Christ. In 2016, the American College of Pediatricians gave their professional judgment on the harm gender ideology and gender realignment procedures are doing to children. We must always show genuine love and understanding to those who are swayed or fall victims to the errors of our times. However, we can never compromise the truth of our faith, nor allow the truth about the human person to be obscured, for that would be false charity. Thank you very much for listening, and God bless you all. Oh